Hello, my name's Les Roberts. I'm a reader in cultural and media studies at the University of Liverpool. My new book, Posthuman Buddhism and the Digital Self, has just been published by Routledge. Um, it's made up of four main chapters and a shorter introduction and conclusion. All of the chapters can, I guess, up to a point, be taken as standalone essays, but the main thread that runs through the book as a whole is focused around the central idea and concept of what I am calling dwell space. In 2016, I designed and began teaching a new undergraduate module called Media Self and Society. Part of the reasoning behind this was to try and push my research into relatively new areas. Uh, these sought to bridge my long-standing interest in questions of space with ideas focused around the phenomenology of self. Uh, when I was developing the module, this was in January 2016, David Bowie had just died. This event serendipitously um, ended up feeding into the introductory lecture which was called Barbie Bowie Buddhism, Media, Culture and the Postmodern Self. So I guess uh, at that point, the early seeds of ideas that would eventually give shape to the book were beginning to be sown. Well, we live in worlds that are highly mediatized. The digital paraphernalia and infrastructures that have become indispensable tools of our everyday living these can't really be thought of as add-ons, objects or accessories in any straightforward dualistic sense. Um, digital technologies are enfolded into our everyday embodied experience. They play hosts to spaces that we inhabit and are thrown within. Uh, they are extensions to our bodies in ways that pose questions as to where boundaries may be drawn between uh, self and world, between humans and technology. Someone proclaimed that we are all cyborgs now. Um, whether that's the case or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but one of the key areas of concern that I explore in the book is the way digital technology can unveil itself into the most banal and incidental moments of our day-to-day -day lives. Empty time, um, boredom, daydreaming, uh, doing uh, nothing in between moments of waiting and um, letting the mind drift uh, and so on. How are these and other experiences of what I'm calling dwell space, uh, how have these been impacted by the 24-7 invasiveness of relentless digital content? I wouldn't say the book is about Buddhism necessarily, but Buddhist ideas, practices and some of its defining tenets, particularly the principle of non-self or empty self, are important to much of what is discussed in the book. For example, one of the chapters explores David Bowie's long-standing interest in Tibetan Buddhism, which dates back to the 1960s. This provides the basis for a broader discussion on the self, performance and creativity, in which dwell spaces are understood as transitional spaces or spaces of everyday creativity. Elsewhere, I look at the rapid expansion of what I call the post-human mindfulness industry and critically explore the commoditization and mediatization of one of the most quintessential of immersive dwell space experiences, that of mindfulness meditation. The significance of ambience, atmospheres or slowness to the production and cultivation of dwell space is also explored. Uh, while none of these concepts is uh, necessarily particular to Buddhism, the negation or dissolution of the self is a central thread that informs how I am theorising uh, these ideas and underpins the phenomenological architecture of dwell spaces that is the main concern in the book. I'll answer that by reading from part of the conclusion. Dwell space, perhaps more than anything else, is a particular disposition towards time. Dwell space speaks to a phenomenology of time that demands of us a radical self-examination in as much as it is predicated on the detachment from content that otherwise bolsters and affirms the carapace of self. To be content in an empty room, to not have content in an empty room, is to efface the self to allow body and mind to drop away, as the philosopher 
and founder of the Soto Zen tradition of Buddhism, Eihei Dogen, put it. Beyond that, and for a fuller explication of Dwell Space, uh, you will of course have to read the book. Uh, thanks for listening.